The Lord's Prayer occurs in verses 9 through 13. However, right from the start of verse 1, in Matthew chapter 6, the Lord is speaking to His disciples, and He talks to them about when they do charitable works, when they uh, pray, how they should pray, um, that they shouldn't be boisterous or show off. And the third point is that he tells them that they shouldn't repeat themselves like the pagans. And the prayer itself goes like this. Avund bishmeya nitqadda shimuch te'te melchutuch nehve savyanuch echanad bishmeya ab ar'a Hawlan lachman sunqanan yumana u shuqlan khobain echana dabakhnan shuqlan lkhayawin u la ta'allan nisyuna illa pasan min bisha mutl diluh hay melchuta u khela u tushbukhta al alam al min amin um first of all avun bishmeya it is Abun means our father, Bishmeya, in heaven. Sometimes it's translated uh, our father who art in heaven. Uh, this is not necessary to say who art. He, of course he is in heaven. He is always in heaven. So it's not, he is not in heaven because we say so. We, nobody puts him there. He doesn't go there and come out of there. He's always in heaven. The father is a spirit. So, Avun the Bishmeya simply means our Father in heaven. The next verse is Nitqadda Shimuch. So it's Avun Bishmeya Nitqadda Shimuch. Now, Nitqadda means blessed is, not uh, uh, hallowed be thy name. In other words, his name doesn't become hallowed. It is hallowed. Nitqaddash Shimuch. Shimuch means your name. Ti'te Melchutuch. Ti'te Melchutuch. Your kingdom is come. Not shall come, because Jesus, Isha, was there already, so the kingdom was there at hand. So it's, he, he wouldn't have said that. So it is, your kingdom is come. Nehve sawyanuch. Your will is done. It's not shall be done. It's always done. Nehve sawyanuch. A chanat bishmeya ab ara. Just a chanat, just as it is in heaven, so also on earth. Verse 11 now. Helen lachman sunkanan yumana. Give us. Lachman sunkana means the, the bread, our bread that nourishes, the bread that nourishes. Now this can be taken in two ways, and they're both correct. So He is the bread of life. And we need this bread for nourishment every day. So Helen, give us, Helen, Lachman, our bread, Sulqanan, for our nourishment, Yumana, daily. And it also is the food for our sustenance. Now verse, the, this was 11, 12. Ushuklan chobain and shuklan and leave us chobain doesn't mean 
and leave us sinful. The word is not transgression. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not debt. Leave our debt. Of course, shok also means forgive, to leave, to leave off. Shok, shoklan chobain. However, the word chobain is not the same as chtahin. Chtita is sin, and uh, and debt, and these other words, transgression. These all have different words in in, in Aramaic, in the ancient Aramaic. So uh, the word chobain has been incorrectly translated in the Greek and then subsequently into all the other European languages. And today in all the languages, the word chobain is mistranslated, including in the modern Syriac and in the Hebrew, in all, in all the languages. So this is the first time that I translated this word correctly for my readers, chobain. When I translated this prayer years ago, I was the only one who translated the word Chobain. And this, many people have emailed me, not a whole lot, but a few people have emailed me and have said that this word Chobain, you know, which I've translated and leave us serene, um, is uh, incorrect or, you know, they don't know where I got the word from. But the word Chobain, in, it comes from the root of two letters, Chet and Beat. Chet is the H, and B is beta, or the other B, Chab. And this Chab, if you look in all the dictionaries in the Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, 17th century dictionaries, all Aramaic biblical dictionaries, Chab, Chayiv, this means obligation or um, the reliction of duty to, to um, not to do one's duty. Is, is to chayiv. So chayivuta, chayavin, our, our dereliction of duties. So uh, forgive our dereliction of duty, set aside. Eichanat abachnan shwiklan chayavin. Eichana, just as we. Also, the app, Echechnan, we, Shukdan, uh, we forgave or not forgave, most, but allowed others serenity, Chayavin. Chayavin. Now, here's the plural of the word Chayiv, Chab, Chaybuta, Chayavin. I'm the first one to point out this is not transgressions. This is not. Uh, sins, because these words are different. Sins is chlita. And, and, and we are not supposed to be asking in this prayer the way the Lord teaches it, forgive us our sins, because, um, because what sins are we talking about? Murder, theft, you know, major crimes, and these are not forgiven in this way. This is simply to ask for guidance on a daily basis. This prayer is designed for that purpose and is not designed to be um, always simply like a magic act that you say this prayer and you are forgiven your sins. This is simply the dereliction of duty and for guidance so we know how to live from day to day. This is the next verse, 13. And do not uh, allow us to enter through trial. Lat Allah, do not allow us to enter. Lat Allah nesiuna illa pasal min bishi. Lat Allah nesiuna, do not allow us to enter through nesiuna through trial. Um, not, do not lead us into temptation, as it is translated in English. Because the, the, the Father does not lead us into temptation. He did. <laughs> That's ridiculous. He doesn't tempt us to commit transgressions or, <laughs> or fail at our duties. So, Ulat uh, Allah Nesyuna, do not allow us to 
enter through trial, illa pasdan min bisha, except illa, except pasdan, deliver us, separate us, illa pasdan min from the evil one, min bisha, from the evil one. So it could be reference to Satan or it could be reference to anybody who uh, is an evil, evil person or an evil individual. So, la ta'allal nisyuna illa pasdan min bisha, mittal, the diluch, haimal chuta, for thine is the kingdom, ukhela, and the power, utishbukhda, and the glory, al-alam, al-meen, ameen, al-alam, to the end of the universe, al-alameen, all the universes, so that's also, you can say forever, ukhela, utishbukhda, al-alam, al-meen, and ameen is added, means, uh, concluding that this is, this is reliable, this you can depend on, I mean, to be certain. It's a, a statement of finality, that this is an acceptable prayer. Of course it's acceptable. The Lord uh, did pray it and showed us how to say the simple pr prayer. Then the Lord goes on and explains about other aspects of how we should pray and how we should fast, etc. And so the chapter 6 is really about our approach, how we shall approach the Lord after he, is, after he is resurrected to heaven. When we pray to Him, He is our Father in heaven. Okay, Because he, he is the only one who appears to us in flesh and blood. And He did historically. And we can rely on the fact that He did from the testimony of the disciples and the apostles. So he is the manifestation of the Father. But for the time being, it's important to realize that when the Lord taught us this prayer through his disciples, we are to pray to him. Not just pray in his name, but to pray to him. It's the only way we're going to get anywhere in this world. And another issue is that... Um, if this prayer was originated in Greek, in other, in other words, there are people that say, in fact, this is the official view of all the churches in modern times, all of them. This language, the ancient Aramaic, is the only language in which you can actually explain the Lord's Prayer and the rest of the scripture, because otherwise you really can't explain the scripture if you're going to go from the Greek. So you can't say that all the New Testament was originated in Greek because then basically it will all be mistranslated. And it was, or it was mistranslated by all the translators that translated strictly from the Greek. And today all the translations of the New Testament from the Greek are wrong. And even the Old Testament has been translated from the Septuagint, the Greek. And so the Greek original has resulted in having completely wiped out all of the correct translations of the scriptures. There's very little that survives. The, the King James Version, uh, William Tyndale, when he translated from the Hebrew, at least the Old Testament he translated from the Hebrew. And since he knew the Hebrew and the ancient Aramaic, he was able to translate uh, from the ancient Aramaic, which is what he was translating from, not the Hebrew, because ancient Aramaic is ancient Hebrew. Same, same language, just different dialect. Modern Aramaic and modern Hebrew are totally different. You know, these are like new English, today's English compared to old English, which is absolutely, uh, bears no resemblance to it. So, uh, if you want to know how to interpret the scripture, you have to go from the ancient Aramaic and translate directly into English. And this is what I've pr been providing you all these years. And this is why I finally got back to the prayer, because I want to explain to you that at least if you get the prayer right, then you understand how it's important to only, if you want to really know the scriptures inside out, then you have to go from ancient Aramaic to English translation if you're going to be studying it in, in English. And that goes for the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Uh, I want to thank you for listening, and I hope that you will take this in the right spirit.
thank you.